There she is. Good morning. Or good afternoon, rather. Hi, Jerry. All right. Let's get Sydney in here. Hi, David. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon. How are you? I dressed up for you. I see. This is my version of dressing up for you. I'm not in sweatpants. I'm in like a <laughs> cut out little romper situation here. You look great, as Thank always. You. So you do you. Great, I, as always. I had our friend Michael Warber, who is my East Coast husband, stop by my house unexpectedly this morning. Yeah. I have my West Coast husband now in the <laughs> afternoon on Eastern time. So well, I have to dress for all my men. Uh, thank you for dressing up. I dress up for you. I haven't put on a blazer in months. Okay. And you know, living in LA, there's really not a need to, but Easter's coming up. And I was like, if I'm going to break out the blazer, it's going to be for Sydney. So. Now's the day. Well, we both have stripes going on, so we're somewhat. We do. Even. We do. Um, so I'll try to get more in the screen so you can see it. But um, thank you for joining me today. Um, for those of, the, of, of you that haven't been on Thinking of Art with Kipton before, um, basically, I came up with this concept in order to reach out to artists and experts around the world to talk about not only art, but also experts that incorporate art into their lives. And what better way to segment this week and to kick off this week with Sydney Sadik, who is live from the Hamptons. And Sydney, I want to jump right into it because not only are you a really great friend and you're a fashion you know, expert, but... How did you get, how did you start down this road? I mean, you studied journalism, you know, out of college at GW, but, you know, tell me a little bit about that. That's right. So I went to GW, but before I even went to college, I got an internship at the Daily Front Row, which is the long running Bible of New York Fashion Week at 16 years old, because that was before the times of internship laws. And I got to really mm -hmm. get my feet wet and going to Fashion Week and reporting and going to tons of different events and just really networking um, and realized that definitely wanted to continue into journalism in college and was a journalism major at George Washington University School of Media and Public Affairs. Before even college, I'd taken some journalism courses at Harvard one summer and started a blog. So between my internship at The Daily and then this website, it was just the best experience to being able to really, um, you know, see what it's like to do this professionally. And at that point, was really focusing on writing. Interned in college for Rachel Zoe, was still writing for The Daily Freelance, worked at Oprah Magazine and Marketing Department and saw every different side of the media industry other than television. Um, and so I graduated school, was a full-time editor at The Daily, and was there for two years. It was amazing and was going to the, you know, covering the Met Ball, was at every event, was writing hundreds right. of articles, interviewing all of my favorite designers and celebrities and even athletes. And then mm -hmm. I just decided that I wanted to transition to being on camera because that's what I love and always wanted to do. And now I do it. Okay. Well, we love seeing you. We love seeing you create the content, especially now while we're stuck at home. And I, you know, we all have had to be more creative in our lives, whether, you know, to stay sane through this, through this craziness. But did you ever think that you would create, you know, so much content, but also start to create these videos, which now have become like these for, for my, my happy space, like every day, if I'm like, oh, if you release a new video, I'm like, I want to see what Sydney's doing today. That's and so fun. it's, it's fun for me to, it's uplifting for me. But did you think that you would kind of segment into this? No, because Instagram has never been my core platform. Like the Instagram audience is so different than the viewership who watches me on television. Half of those audience members who know me so well, and like I get stopped on the street, they don't even go on Instagram. They're still part of the Facebook demographic because we still mm -hmm. see an older population watching television in comparison yeah. to the millennials and Gen Z. But, and the shows have been great. A lot of the shows are still calling me in and I'm doing Skype interviews, but I realized to myself, that's gonna only be every now and then. And I'm someone who's used to a really fast, quick paced environment. And Instagram is that. And I'm not a blogger. I'm not, you know, that's not, this is not my um, 
right. goal is to always be on Instagram every day doing this. But right now it's the best outlet that I can have to create content like you're saying to kind of run the show that I've always wanted, which is talking to interesting people um, and entertaining people, but also informing them. And then the TikTok side, like that's the future. That was something I never thought in a million years I would ever even download onto my phone. My brother was always against it because he thinks and there's research or whatnot that there's like Chinese spyware tied into it. But I said, you know what, forget it. There's nothing really better to do right now. Let me download it. And I've noticed mm-hmm. that me posting those TikTok videos on my Instagram account has led my Instagram followers to see like a whole uncanny New fun side. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Silly side. Yeah. And, and it's creative. So with that, I mean, you're an artist. I mean, most of the time I, I speak to artists that are painters, photographers, but you are an artist in that you're creating. Sorry to interrupt you, but you're... Yeah. You're creating, um, you know, through fashion, through your eye and your expert eye that you developed over your life and through your passion. I mean, you've created this incredible brand, but also, you know, we, we look to you for, you know, I wish you would do more for men because, you know, you're doing so much for, for girls and women, but I wish you could do more for men. So can you talk about that a little bit? Like, what do guys, what can guys do right now to stay comfy and fashionable at home and dress up? And especially like if we're, if we're virtual dating, um, both of us are yeah. single right now. So if we're, if we're going on virtual dates, like we segment into that a little bit, your recommendations. Sure. You asked me on a virtual FaceTime yesterday and like, I don't know how I <laughs> felt or feel about it. Like maybe if it was someone I've been texting for a while, but someone who's uh-huh. just like it's been like a day trying to like slide into the dms not sure how i feel about that um however you know in terms of we're operating on a seasonal schedule with trends and with men's fashion yes there is men's fashion week but it's not really as indicative of what men are actually wearing on the streets so I like being the best in what I do, and I'm not sure men's is where I would fall, but I do suggest for men who are going on FaceTime dates is to, someone just said this is so New York, haha, yes, this is very New York. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it's really just to like be in clothing that you're comfortable in, and I don't think that you have to go all out because I don't think the women are even going to be going all out. You know, if I was going out on a date in real life right now, I'd be concerned about like, wearing something super sexy and like, you know, looking more polished maybe. And I think now it's a good time to really embrace the personalities of people and the outfits are kind of like the secondary part. So just wear things that are complimentary to getting to know someone one-on-one because this is such a rare and unique opportunity to do that. Okay, that's good advice. Have you had any virtual dates yet? No, I've been texting this guy for like a month. We matched on Raya right before this all started. And um, he's really cute. And we text like every single day to me to do that. And I don't know if he's just, that's just not even like on his radar or he thinks I think it's weird. With him, like I kind of want to do it because we've been talking for so long. I would have probably been already on a couple of dates with him if this wasn't happening. Mm -hmm. But you know, if there's like guys like I'm on the apps, but I don't really like interact with the people on there. I, right. I just don't. Right. Um, I get it. But like well, I'm getting asked all the time is the point. Have right. You? Right. So so that brings me back to virtual dating may be the way, you know, that we're we're gonna have to meet people for the foreseeable future. You know, I'm dealing yeah. with this with artists and creating you know, going into artist studios and seeing artists virtually and bringing my clients in to see the art that way. Whereas you, st- you know, uh, you know, when you buy art, for example, you really want to touch it and feel it and see it. So this is forcing a whole new way for us to, to all interact, right? So yeah, dressing, you know, dressing the part, you know, I didn't want to put on a blazer today. I did it because of our segment. But I feel like it changed the way that I felt. It it made me feel more serious and more confident. And um, any recommendations that you can give us and keep giving us, we appreciate that. Um, so I wanted to ask you another question. Like, 
what art do you, what artists do you like? I notice in your Instagrams, you have like this heart over your bed. That's like a, that's a Damien Hirst print, I believe. So I wanted to talk to you about that and some of your favorite artists. <laughs> Our feed is a little, love, little delayed here. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see it? Yeah, we have a uh, bad connection. So let's see. Let's oh. see here. Can you see me? Yeah. Okay. okay I'm waiting now to see I it. I see you. Okay, perfect. Can you see me? Yeah, I okay. can see you now. Did you see the painting? No. Did you see the painting turn it, before? Turn it again. Oh. No. Oh, perfect. There you go. So, so yeah, that's a Damien Hirst print. The butterfly piece, I love. I love that series. Are there, it, why did you choose that piece over your bed? I mean, obviously your mom has an amazing eye for art. Yeah. But did you, did you get to speak to her about kind of what piece you wanted in your room or did she just surprise you with it? We both, there's an art gallery right near our apartment called Carlton Gallery right on the Upper East Side. And I'd seen it in the window many, many times. And I thought it was just so beautiful. I always loved butterflies. I loved Dean Hurst. <laughs> and we knew that there needed to be some focal art piece in my room. And I think, you know, when you shop, it's you have to learn in life where to splurge and where to save. And a lot of my furniture are pieces you could find, like between my room and my glam room, you could find at Walmart. We got stuff at CB2. It's so high and low, but if there's one piece of anything that I want to spend money on, it's art because that's something that never goes out of style. For sure. So I also, and my room is very neutral and I knew that I wanted some sort of pop of color. So I just thought it was the perfect piece. I love that the heart is on it. And I think I first saw like the whole Damien Hurst evolution blow up with Kylie Jenner's, did my mom just write that? <laughs> my mom yeah. showed that too. Um, in Kylie Jenner's dining room because she had on the back of her chairs butterflies. And I just thought it was so cool. And then I really wanted to like keep with the red and pink aesthetic of the artwork in the rest of my room. Mm -hmm. We're big fans of cause, which my brother really introduced us to. So yeah. I have a cause I sculpture right there. I love and that. We each have our own cause sculptures in each of our rooms out here, my mom, brother, and I. And then um, down in our basement, we have a lot of the cause stuffed animals. So it's like this house for us has definitely been a place to collect and to kind of explore our interests in art. Um, and, you know, like you always say, like my other favorite artists, I, I'm, it's for me, it's about the piece. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like Andy Warhol. Your emotional connection that you have with that piece that draws you to it. Yeah. Yeah, and the Andy Warhol pieces I love. I just think it's so timeless. And like when my parents were married, they had a big art collection that they developed together. And, you know, it was all of those major artists. So at that time, it was so much easier to get your hands on the pieces. Um, but Warhol, Lichtenstein, those are, you know, obviously the big ones. But then like I have this really cool um, Chanel drawing back here painting and it's by an artist in New York Pam Gaslow and she does these fun fashion forward prints so it's such a big accumulation of so many different levels of artists and different price points and like again like you said it's more about my emotional connection uh -huh. versus right. the brand right I always say don't buy art as an investment buy art you know if you if you love it buy it if it's a street artist, if it's, you know, an artist in the gallery that you, you know, you're, you're walking by and you see it and it speaks to you and you can afford it, buy it. So yeah. um, what, I, I have a bunch of questions for you. The artist was one. Um, what's your favorite, what was your favorite celebrity interview and have you interviewed an artist, specifically an artist, not like yes. necessarily a musician, but a painter, have you interviewed a painter or, or a visual artist? I've interviewed Alex Katz on the phone before. Okay, how was that? Because uh, he did a collaboration with H&M. And I had just started The Daily, to be perfectly honest with you. I didn't realize how big of a deal, deal he was he when I was on the phone with him. Yeah. Because I was very much thrown into it. I was covering for somebody. And then I got off the phone. I was like, oh, my God, I know his work, obviously. 
So that was very cool. And I think it was probably better because I sounded very, you know, jaded on the phone. Um, but he was lovely. Like it was, I guess it was like five years ago now. So it's always cool to hear when artists are also trying to get their feet wet into fashion and merging the two together. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, that was that. And my favorite person I've ever interviewed, probably Tom Brady. Wow. He okay. was the face of UGG and I happened to be in LA on vacation and um, I knew the head of marketing because you want a one on one opportunity with Tom. We're bringing three journalists out here to the Hollywood Hills. You want to come spend the day with him. And mm -hmm. they drove me out and we spent the day together. And he was just like the nicest down to earth human guy, like just totally cool. And I'm not a big sports fan, as you know. Yeah. But he's, you know, to me, like an American icon. And Absolutely. that's so great. So, um, my mom, so my go ahead. Mom, my mom's right. I did interview Shepard Barry. Oh my god! My mom oh was yeah. Really good. Yeah. How was that? I mean, I, I, I curated a show with Shepard's work for Art Basel with Architectural Digest. God, that's been five, six years ago. He's he's yeah. really he's really cool. Yeah, I went on a press trip um, a year ago with him. I went on behalf of Hamptons Magazine, but I was invited to um, cover his whole collaboration with uh, Hugh Blow. So he was designing watches and they brought us into a studio and we got to see how he makes all this art. And it was just like this huge warehouse, like in the middle of LA that you would have no idea even existed. And they brought us around for like day three days with him to all of his favorite restaurants and to um, his favorite districts. And it was just so cool, not only just to interview him and be one-on-one -on -one with him, but to like see his perspective of life because artists mm -hmm. have such a specific way of looking mm -hmm. at things. Mm -hmm. So, what would be your advice for any artist out there, whether they be a painter or, or somebody just getting started creatively? What would be your kind of top tips, inspirational tips for them? Just to do it. I think half of the world, you know, has all these ideas and people are there and they're like, oh, I have this great idea, this great idea. But like actually doing it and the follow through is something so unique in this world because not many people actually complete the task. So I think coming up with your idea, but then really just like taking the initiative and having it come to life. Life is so unpredictable as we know it now. And I would have, you know, I would hate to look back at my life and be like, I didn't do something that I really felt passionate about and wanted to do. So I think it's just about being creative, but then really doing it. Yeah, one thing I've always respected with you, especially when you when you left the daily, for example, I remember having those conversations with you of the next steps and how scary, you know, scary it was for you to take that leap and, and go out on your own. I remember having those conversations with you and it's any entrepreneur, or any artist, I mean, you're putting yourself out there on a, on a daily basis and and you're risking a lot by doing that and not depending on a corporate paycheck. So I just want to say kudos to you for, for following your passion and for continuing down that path. I'm so excited to see where you're going to be in the next, you know, six months to a year. Um, what, um, what are you doing nowadays to like stay creative besides doing your segments, your lunchtime with Sydney every day and or during the week? Tell me, tell us some other things that you're doing create, to stay creative. I really think those are honestly the main things. Like I play piano, I have a keyboard here. I haven't really done it. You know, it's interesting. Like the things that I used to do to stay creative before all this happened aren't necessarily what I find to be relaxing now, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. So like something like playing the piano would make me like so in my own head, which I don't really want. Right now I'm kind of trying to feel like out of this bubble that we're in. Yeah. And so I think it's also just like watching what other people are doing. And like, I was definitely using coloring books at the beginning of all of this. Like, is it like coloring. a child? Your mom's saying coloring. Yeah. Yeah. Coloring. Yeah. See, we speak for each at the same time. Coloring books. And, you know, we would order all these books on Amazon and I would do it all. And, you know, I found that to be very relaxing, but like I've personally definitely shifted, um, mentally and spiritually in the last, I would say month at the beginning of all of this, I was not, getting up, putting my hair together, doing my makeup. I was very, depressed is not the word. I don't get depressed. I was just very nervous. And I didn't feel the need to like, pretend like everything was okay when it really wasn't. Yeah. But now I feel like we're at a little bit of a different stage where we're understanding the battle that we're up against. And yeah. 
I feel like I'm doing everything I can to do the right thing, to stay home, to not be going out to places we shouldn't be, not seeing my anybody in the last month. And now I feel like, okay, now's my time to think about me and to do what makes me happy. And, you know, that's like doing things like this and seeing my yeah. friends and yeah, talking. Absolutely. And, yeah. No, I think that's beautiful. I mean, I think I'm doing the same. We all... I mean, it is, um, even though it's a frustrating time and, and a scary time for us, it's, it's an amazing opportunity for us to dive in and really d see what we're passionate about. And I think for me being alone for all these weeks, it's really kind of transformed kind of the way that I interact with people and it's, I've come up with new ideas and creative, creative outlets like this. So thank you for taking time. Um, uh, somebody said, oh, I'm going to look at the questions real fast. This one's, why does, why does it look like the person from Spider-Man? I have no idea. That's very, <laughs> very kind of you. Um, there are some other questions up here, but if you have any questions for, for me or Sydney, just message me and, and we'll get back to you. But I just wanted to say thank you for taking time. Stay creative. I'm so excited to see more of your content, your TikTok videos. <laughs> your lunchtime at Sydney. Everybody tune in to her every day. Thank you. And, That's uh, so sweet. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay, I love you. Love you too. Mwah. Bye.